Bum 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 bum. Tomatoes. Hello, welcome to video four. What is set input action priority? Let's go ahead and run our quick little example. We'll hit play. When we pull up our pause menu, nothing really funny happens. We have our pause menu and then a separate menu that's created by our pause menu. When we hit the pause menu again, well, you'll notice that the main menu disappeared, but our separate menu was not. And if we hit pause again, well, now that one disappeared. And then if we hit pause again, we go back and we kind of have no real order to what's going on. That's because the order of priority by default is pretty much the same. And then when you're consuming input, maybe inside of different widgets, you can't really guarantee which order is going to happen unless you set up the priority. And that's what we're going to look at here. So basically what I'm doing here is I'm pulling up a pause menu when I hit the pause button inside of our character. And our pause menu is going to be the white screen we see here. Now inside of that, I'm simply creating a secondary pause menu, which is our little pink one over here. And it is adding it to the viewport. Then after that, I'm telling it to listen for the pause button as well. And then if so, it's going to say it was paused and it's going to go ahead and remove itself from the uh, parent. And it's the same thing for the mini menu. It's going to go ahead and listen for the pause button and then remove itself from the parent as well after it prints out that it printed. The set input action priority allows us to determine what is going to happen first if there is something coming into our input stack. Keep in mind your input stack is going to be any actors you've said to take input. It's going to be any controllers because by default it goes through the controller stack. And it's going to be any widgets we've told to listen for input action. So we have a giant stack of input. Sometimes we might want it to be in a certain order. In my case, I want the smaller menu to have priority because it was opened up after the bigger menu. And then the bigger menu to have the next priority and then the controller itself to have priority after that. So I can use the set input action priority node to do that. If we go ahead and type in set input action priority, we're gonna find the node and it's pretty simple. It takes in a user widget. Normally it's gonna be the widget you call it on. So we create it inside this widget. We're gonna set the priority on this widget. And then the new priority. Higher numbers, higher priority. Lower numbers, including negative, negative priority. We're going to go and hook this up to a priority of one. And we're going to go and run this and see what happens this time. Keep in mind, I'm telling this to consume the input. So that way, when this takes the pause button, nothing else should get the pause button notification. We run this. We pull up our two menus. Remember, we've created this one by hitting the pause button. And then this menu created this one afterwards. Now, when we hit the pause button, our smaller menu says it was pressed and it disappears. We hit the pause button again. Our larger menu says it was pressed and it disappears. And then we can hit the pause button again and pull everything back up. That's because it's using priority. If we look at it, this has a priority of one. It's going to go ahead and call this notification and consume the input. Once this menu is gone and off of our screen, we now have this listening for input. It has a default priority of zero, so it's going to be next because it was added as a widget listening. It's going to consume the input and remove itself. Once it's gone, we're now back to our character. We have nothing overriding our default input, so it's going to go ahead and call its input next. And that is simply how that works. Let me pull up our menu again. You will find in the class defaults, under input, a default priority. The default is zero. You can set it here instead of using the node. If I was to disconnect this and type in one, we'll go ahead and hit play and we'll see what happens. It should pull up my menu, close the pink one, close the main one, pull up the menu again. Same thing I did using the node here, I've gone ahead and set as the default. So this is a good way of hard coding things. And of course you can change it using the node. If I wanted to make sure I had an explicit order, Let's go into my other menu, which is going to be this one. Let's change its default to two. We'll go ahead and hit play. Now we should actually see the opposite. 
we should be able to pull up our menu. Close the white one, close the pink one, pull up the menu again. And we've done that by changing our priority order. So that is how your priority order works. Keep that in mind. You're going to get your widgets with the priority order and it's going to feed down to your controller. And also keep in mind with consume unchecked, it's going to pass along that information. So if I unchecked consume inside of our pink menu, let's make sure it's priority is one. Let's go to our white menu, reset its priority to zero. Let's go ahead and tell our pink menu not to consume. And let's go ahead and run this example. Now when we pull up our menu and then we hit pause again, it gets rid of both of them, which is what we wanted. But in terms of priority, our pink menu, let's pull this one over here, make it easier. Our pink menu here has got a priority of one. It's going to do our action, but not consume it. So that means we now go down to our next item. Our next item is our white menu with a priority of zero. It is going to do our action, but then consume the input so it doesn't get passed back down to our player. And that is going to be our action priorities. You can set them by default or set them using the node. And that is going to wrap up this video.